It's late July. Let's take a tour of the farm. I'll show you the impact that the animals are having, what all we're doing with animals. I'll show you what the loggers are doing. I'll show you what we're doing with a bulldozer to create some savannas. Uh, we'll cover all of the bases of what we've been doing to try to keep moving the farm on the leading edge uh, as a regenerative farm here in the deep south in Louisiana. We'll start with the animals. You can see the cows here. We have about 100 cows, 70 or 80 calves, I'm not sure which. And you can also see uh, the bulls right up there, the bulls that are in the pasture as well. So what we're doing in this particular pasture is strip grazing it. It's about an 18 acre pasture. And I've divided it into three equal sections uh, of six acres apiece. And we are grazing each section with all of the cows for three days at the max. Uh, so they'll graze it down pretty intensively. Then we'll take the cows out. So the regenerative practices uh, typically are uh, a function of intensive grazing with recovery periods. And the recovery period is based on time of the year, how much rain, what's growing, and so forth. So uh, right now we're going to graze this field down. Uh, pretty tightly and then move all the cows out to another field. More on that later. I'll get into the food plots in a lot of detail in the fields and a lot of detail a little later on in this, in this video and I'll show you what we've planted, the impact that the cows are having on it, and how we're using the cattle to constantly feed the microbiology of the soil, uh, improve the fertility of the fields, improve the fertility of the fields, the productivity of the fields, making it better for everything. So. Um, Fun to watch the cows. It's been a pleasure having them on the farm. Let's move on. And we have pigs too. Five pigs. Trying them out to see how that's going to work. I have to believe that everybody in Louisiana likes them a little pork, so these fellows will be ready for October processing. Tessa's not sure what to think about that. Here's our laying hen set up. We have about uh, 400 laying hens, and you can see we have a net wire fence around a, a fairly large area that allows them to graze, if you will, inside the net wire fence. This is electric, so I certainly don't want to touch it. Um, and then you have the, the chicken tractor back there where they can uh, lay their eggs and be in the shade. It's super hot, but uh, they've been fairly comfortable. Um, so we graze them through this pasture. The tractor moves every day. Uh, once we've moved it about three times through this net wire fence, hello there, Muddy. And we have these guard dogs, as you can see here. Uh, they actually are more for guarding against avian predators, hawks uh, and such. So they do their job every day. Uh, the net wire fence keeps the coons and bobcats and those sorts of predators out. So anyhow, we move the, the large tractor every day. We move the net wire fence about every three days through this field. And about a month ago, we grazed cows through here. So there's cow manure all over the place in here. So the chickens are able to fully express their chickenness and uh, scratch the cow patties, get the uh, bugs out of that, the larvae out of that. They're able to eat the Durana clover, which is flourishing in this field, eat the bugs that are growing up in the sorghum that you can see. So uh, it's a great environment for a chicken. Um, we feed these chickens uh, an organic feed that's soy free and GMO free. Uh, my wife and I, we don't eat GMOs, so we certainly don't want the chickens eating GMOs. And uh, we believe that this produces the, the very best eggs in the whole wide world. So I'll let you decide that. and. Um, uh, that's how we, how we grow our layers. Now, let's move on to the broilers. Here's the last stop on the animal tour for Baker Bayou Farm and Market, uh, the broilers. We have about 100 broilers here, and you can see we use the same net wire fence to contain them, so they're able to graze in here just like the uh, laying hens do. Um, what we found is we're able to sell the broilers just about as fast as we process them, so we'll continue to increase the number of broilers that we uh, grow at a time. Uh, as I said, right now we have about 100, and as you can see, they're kind of loafing in the shade of a beautiful chestnut tree. 
Now we have a whole grove of chestnut trees right here, and so we're just moving them along the, the chestnut trees where they can uh, do the same thing the laying hens do. They get to eat the bugs and, the, and scratch and cow manure and uh, fed the same high quality feed that the layers are, are, are fed. So uh, one more addition to Baker Bayou Farm and Market. So right now we have cows, we have pigs, we have uh, laying hens and we have broilers and uh, through time we intend to increase both the number of animals as well as the diversity of animals. All a part of our regenerative practices designed to uh, light up every square foot of the entire farm. It's an exciting project. Glad you're staying along. It's late July and I thought I'd show you what the food plots look like. I'm in the middle of an 11 acre field here uh, that we planted the first of May. Um, we planted uh, sun hemp, cow peas, buckwheat, and sorghum. As you can see, the, the red clover is uh, from the fall planting that we did back uh, last October, and it's still doing fantastic. Uh, a great cover of uh, red clover. Uh, here's a cow pea. The cow peas are scattered all out through this field. Uh, you can see some uh, chicory that we planted. Well, actually several years ago, it's all in bloom. Very beautiful bloom. So, as you can see, we in this 11 acre field, we kept this two or three acres out and did not graze it. But in this field, we graze it uh, anywhere from five to eight times a year. It's called adaptive grazing. Uh, you can see right here where the deer have uh, been eating this uh, sun hemp. Uh, uh, here's another one that they've been eating on right here. <laughs> a lot of grazing going on in this field. At any rate, um, we'll graze this field anywhere from five to eight times a year. It's called adaptive grazing, and that's a function of rainfall, what crops are growing at the particular time. Uh, more cow peas, they're, they're flourishing up in here. Um, so here you can see the line from where uh, we grazed the cows to where we didn't graze them. So this particular part of the pasture was grazed about four weeks ago. Um, just like you've seen earlier in the video, all of the cows strip grazed in small uh, two, three, four acres and then moved quickly. Uh, they graze it to the ground, but because the microbiology is so robust in this field, even with the droughty conditions and the hot we've been having, it bounces right back. Uh, uh, here you can see some chicory down low, also some plantain that's planted in here, the sorghum. Um, there's clover all out in here. And if you'll look, um, uh, here's some sun hemp. So uh, this field, even though it's been grazed, there is a tremendous amount of forage in here for both wildlife and uh, we'll probably come back and uh, graze this in another uh, two or three weeks. Certainly if we get some rainfall, it'll flourish and it only um, benefits from the grazing. Uh, having the animals in here with their manure, with their saliva, with their hair lying in it, feeds the microbiology, uh, which feeds the plants. Uh, it's a fascinating thing too. When the plants get grazed, it actually stresses them a little bit and they uh, immediately start ca uh, capturing more carbon pushing the carbon down into the soil, which feeds the microbiology, which then feeds the plants. It's a circular closed loop system that's just fascinating. Nature at its best. Another project that we've accomplished this summer to try to create a little more grazing acreage and uh, convert parts of the farm back to a savanna, which is uh, one of our long-term goals, is we had a stand of longleaf pines, young longleaf pines. We put a bulldozer in here and swept them out a little bit to open it up some to create the savanna look. You can see the windrow there. We'll be burning that. Uh, but it really creates quite a beautiful landscape. You can see we left a number of pines in there. We've also come into this particular stand. It's about 35 acres. So I can only show you a small part of it. But uh, we came into this particular stand and broadcast some sorghum. All we did was run the tractor with the broadcaster and threw some sorghum on the ground, got a couple of rains on it, and you can see uh, it's done quite well. We hadn't put the cows in here yet. Uh, that sorghum right there is six, seven feet tall. Uh, it's really quite a beautiful landscape, and of course uh, the deer love it as well. We'll broadcast Elbon rye and some radishes and clovers up in here, crimson clover in here, this fall get that established and uh, try to put as heavy a grazing pressure in here as possible. 
to even the soil out a little bit. And then ultimately our goal will be to let this uh, grow back a natural regeneration. Uh, we've left the pines spaced out enough where we can run a tractor through and bush hog in between them. Interesting experiment. Yet one more thing to play with here on the farm. Well, we have loggers on the farm right now working on three different projects. Uh, we have been clearing a lot of the right-of-ways up, opening them up, uh, uh, taking about 75 feet uh, off of each side of the road to air the roads and also create more grazable acreage. Uh, the openings being wider like that are good for both the wildlife and the cattle. Also, we did a classic civil culture cut on about 75 acres, uh, uh, thinning them out, uh, releasing the better trees and taking the lower quality ones out. We've been doing projects like that you know, for 30 or 40 years. And then lastly, we still had some severely damaged areas from Hurricane Laura. There you can see the right away being opened up. We had some severely damaged areas from Hurricane Laura, and we are clear cutting them and opening them up. So that's the logger projects. All right, let's have some fun now. Let's end this video on a fun note. Head into the next pasture, and they are excited. Well, that's how easy it is to move them. They're usually pretty ready to go. And they disappear into their new home. We'll strip graze this for another week or so. You can see there's a, a lot of forage up in there. And the cows have literally disappeared. I think they're going to be very happy.